This build is sponsored by Progressive Desks, who sent me their Solo Riser desk frame. I worked with them on the pinball table project and I was really impressed with the build quality of their actuators. So I thought I would try their premium model sit stand workstation. The frame is adjustable in width from 39.6 inches to 70 inches. And the height is adjustable from 23.6 inches up to 49.1 inches. So the frame weighs 65 pounds, but it can lift up to 270 pounds with its dual motors. I've estimated that the parts I'll be adding to this build will be about 130 pounds. So the lifting power of this desk is more than adequate for my needs. The Solo Riser did not struggle at all while lifting my weight, which speaks to the quality of the motors in use. Dual motors isn't always better, but typically manufacturers have their higher end desk models with dual motor configurations. The motors are concealed and mounted above each leg and the positions are monitored and balanced by the controller to ensure that the top is lifting level no matter which side of the desk has more weight on it. The frame also incorporates this wedge design, which from what I've read, reduces the amount of wobble when the desk is at its fully raised position. The Solo Riser also has some great features such as collision detection and four available memory height presets. After coming up with the plan in Fusion 360, I was ready to build the desktop from Baltic Birch Plywood and Walnut. All of the pieces for the wooden frame are aligned using this amazing Jessam doweling jig before being glued together. The making of these radius corners was covered in a previous video which is linked here and in the video description. Sealing the corners with black silicone will make sure we don't have any leaks in the future when we go to pour the epoxy. A family event around this house has been ripping apart e-waste, discussing components, what they do, and how they work. So as a result, I have a bunch of parts I can use for this project. The more e-waste we can put into the desk, the less epoxy we have to use. I'm also gonna take apart a few more delicate items myself and make sure I remove the batteries. While preparing the electronics, I had to remove all of the labels and the leftover adhesives. And in some cases, like this original Nintendo motherboard, I had to modify the height so that it would sit below the epoxy line. Aside from the LEDs embedded in the epoxy, the only other working component will be this Apple MagSafe wireless charger. The plan was to have an embedded coaster sitting flush with the epoxy top that had this detailed engraving of Ohm's Law. And later, you'll see why this detail didn't quite work out.
wanted to pour the clear epoxy in one go, but I came up about one gallon short with the epoxy kit that I ordered. I have more epoxy on the way, should be here tomorrow, but the longer that the epoxy sets, there's a good chance that I may have to sand in between coats. With this project, that would be a nightmare. So it didn't go quite as I had planned. This layer of epoxy has cured beyond the point of being able to pour another layer of epoxy directly over it. I've scuffed up the entire surface with sandpaper and now we can pour another layer directly over this and hopefully we'll get to see these scratches disappear. In order to get a nice flush and level surface, I had to sand right through the detail on the coaster, but it still looks pretty cool. I made a mistake by placing the dowel too close to the surface on this corner. I've tried using some fillers and it's not looking very good. So what I'm gonna do is use these two pieces of maple that I've cut out and inlay them and hopefully make the mistake a little more intentional. Sometimes these things can turn out looking pretty good. Shout out to Matt Eastley who does an excellent video on how to hand cut dovetails. After doing a practice joint on my own, I think I'm ready to do it on the real thing. I printed up these bottom covers for the bottom computer mount and installed some final accessories and completed all the cabling for the final installation.
Overall, I'm very happy with how this desk turned out and I've been using it every day for the past two weeks. I definitely learned a few lessons along the way, like make sure you have enough epoxy before you start the pour. And there's also the Ohm's Law coaster that never quite turned out. Now the LEDs embedded in the epoxy can be a bit much in one of their more complex modes. But when paired with the Govi app, there's quite a bit more flexibility. I've set two timers so that the LEDs are on only during my work shift. So I know when it's time to take a break or when it's time to call it quits. One reported issue I was worried about on these sit-stand desks is monitor wobble. And it really hasn't been noticeable for me during my regular day's use. But it certainly will wobble like crazy if you try. The wheels are also a super handy touch and are very helpful when getting behind the desk to do any cabling. But the nut inserts that fasten the wheels to the frame can become loose when there's wheels installed. But at this point, I think I'm definitely over the weight restriction after adding the computer, the monitor, the speakers, and that this Solarizer desk really is handling the extra load without any issues, it doesn't seem to be stressed or struggling at all. It probably shouldn't take me four months to just change my desk, but I didn't take any shortcuts here with this project. That's it for this build. Thanks for watching. Over and out.